Hey everyone, welcome back again this week. So glad that you're here and joining us. Um, last week we talked about what it meant to love our neighbor. We talked about the great commandment to love others, love God and then love others. And, and we looked at the story of the Good Samaritan. But we're going to continue on in that same vein of thought today and ask for God to, to speak to us and to open our eyes and maybe uh, who our neighbors are and how we can allow His love to work in us and flow through us. This morning what we're going to look at is a very similar type of passage uh, that we did last week. Well, this, is, this, this week it's the woman at the well. Again, she's a Samaritan, and this is Jesus' interaction with her. If we look in John 4, we're going to read portions of this chapter, but I want to start in verse 3. Here we go. It says, So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. So he's, Jesus has left Judea, he's going to return to Galilee, but it says in verse 4, he had to go through Samaria. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar near the field of Jacob, um, gave his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. He had to go through Samaria. Now, if we go back to the Greek and look at those words, what it's talking about is, is not that he had to, but he chose to go through. It was something he felt called to do. There's the had, right? Called to do, to go through Samaria. That wouldn't be normal for a Jew. The Jews and Samaritans, we talked about it last week, they did not like each other. Just a dislike. They didn't respect each other. And so that would not be the normal route. But that's the route that Jesus felt called. Had to go through Samaria, right? And now, starting at verse 7, it says this, Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. Now again, here we go. What's a Jew talking to a Samaritan for, right? He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Now look how he walks through this. So here he is, he's sitting at the well at noontime. She's coming, if you know the story, she's coming at noontime because she wants to avoid, there's a, she wants to avoid any kind of um, judgment. The way people would look at her. I mean, her life is not gone like she would have hoped. And there have been a lot of people that would have looked down in her. So she chooses the hottest part of the day to come to Jacob's well to, to draw water. And here's Jesus. And Jesus, right off the bat, evidently, shows her kindness and respect. The fact that he would even talk to her catches her off guard, right? And how he cares for her. One of the things, and if you guys haven't watched this, you need to watch The Chosen. And if you're not sure what that is, it's a TV series that came out um, this last year, and it's just phenomenal. I mean, actually a couple years ago, I think. And it's phenomenal. I invite you to, to they've got two seasons down it's it's just i love the way this particular passage the way that they portray it but he is he is very much valuing her showing her that she's a real person that he cares and that he loves right and the fact that he even asked her for a drink is just amazing and and she her her, her response shows how she's caught off guard how, you a jew would ask me right there's that value, right? Now, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think that you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Now again, you have to understand that part of the way that we would read this in our culture is almost this, this degrading, well, the, the water I have isn't like the water you're talking about. And the, and the water that I have, it's going to... And, and that's not evidently how he phrased it or how he presented it. The, 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 his eyes as he communicated it. Because her response shows that, wait a minute, I'm intrigued. And her response is, please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to be here and get 
come here to get water. So her response is, oh my goodness, if you can provide this, this living water, I'm not going to have to come back to this well to get water all the time, right? So you can see that, that he's placed value on her. I believe this. I believe that Jesus presented this in such a way that she wanted to hear more. And, and, and then in verse 16, Jesus says, go and get your husband, Jesus told her. And her response is, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have five, you've had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man that you're now living with. You certainly spoke the truth. And again, what I see here is not, you gotta, in fact, we're gonna see it in a second, but as he's saying this, he's not saying, well, yeah, um, you're not, you have five husbands, the man you're living with. He's not, that's not the attitude because look at her response. Look at her response of verse 19. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worshiped. So, so you see that she wants, what she's looking for here is more clarification. Again, in our culture and the way we tend to read this is, well, how can, and if this is, but she's intrigued. She's asking for clarification. And I believe that Jesus has, has valued her, shown her respect. He's communicated in such a way that she wants to engage and she wants to talk back. She wants to know more, right? Jesus replied in verse 21, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now here he is, he begins to explain more what, what he's talking about. And again, as we walk through that, and, and, and we could take this, there's a ton of messages in this passage, right? But what I'm looking at is, is who Jesus is talking to. He's a Jew, she's a Samaritan. Her response, the value he's showing her, the love he's showing her, the care that he's showing her, and her responses as he walks through this with her. Look at her response in verse 25. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And I love this. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Now again, I, 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 I'm sorry I'm re-emphasizing this over and over, but he is showing value and respect. Even as he shares this with her, he is showing care. He's showing interest. He's, he's wanting to walk through this with her. She knows he wants to be there and that he wants to talk with her. Now, in the next couple of verses, what, what, there's some trans transactions that take place. There's some, there's some communication that takes place. But, but this, is, this is so cool. So the, so the woman runs back to her village and listen to what she says in verse 29. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. This is absolutely amazing to me. So here's a woman, she's at the well at noon. Why? To avoid everybody, right? She encounters Jesus, Jesus shows her value. Jesus shows her respect. Jesus shows her love. He walks through this, this dialogue with her, explaining who he is and what he has to offer. And what's her response? To run back to the village to tell others, right? And get this, she does it. This is the woman that's there at noon, right? Avoiding everybody. She goes back and tells her, and what do they do? They come. They come, right? And they, 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 the people come streaming from the village to see him. In fact, it actually says later in that passage that many come to know him. Many are saved that day. I love that because of the love that Jesus showed, the care that he showed to the Samaritan woman 
She goes back and the village comes and many come to know him. Now, as he's explaining this to his disciples, there's a number of verses here, but as he's explaining this to his disciples, we go to verse 35 and it says this, you will know, you know the saying, four months between planting and harvest, but I say, wake up and look around, the fields are already ripe for harvest. Now, when I hear that again, what I hear is wake up, like, like wake up, you're sleeping, wake up, right? If you go back to the Greek and you look at that word wake up, it means look up. Look up, look up around you. The harvest is ripe. We talked about it last week, right? Who is our neighbor? Our neighbor is a person near us. Our neighbor is somebody that God has placed us in the, in the sphere of our influence. It might be your next door neighbor, it might be a coworker, it could be a family member, it might be the next person you meet as you're shopping. Maybe pumping gas. I don't know. But that's our neighbor. And, and here he is, Jesus, exampling this in front of the, with the woman at the well and showing her love and respect. And many come to know him. The fields are ripe with harvest. The fields are ripe and ready for harvest. A few weeks ago, we gave you some cucumber plants. I took those home and I, I'm scared to death because I, I told you guys, take these home and take care of them, steward them well, and you'll see the fruit of the vegetable, right, that, that's, that's supplied from this. Well, I'm, ha I'm having a riot. I took home, I think it was three plants, and I've got probably in the neighborhood of 20 or so cucumbers, and they're growing. I think the largest is probably five or six inches at this point in time, and I can't wait, right? The fields are ripe for harvest. As you're in your neighborhoods, at work, pumping gas, the next person you come across, the next person that you might meet today may be an, interna an interaction that God has placed you in to show love, to show care, to show respect. Now hear, hear my heart on this, please, church. During these last number of months and even year, year and a half, there are people with differing opinions about a lot of things, aren't there? We could go into politics, we could go into COVID, we could go into masks, we get, I'm not gonna go there, right? We go into all those things. We have differing opinions. I could take a survey on Sunday morning, I could take a survey with you and, and we'd have different opinions all over the place. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be much anywhere near the differences between a Jew and a Samaritan. And yet Jesus shows respect. He shows love. He shows care. I believe that God is calling us, church. I truly believe that God is calling us to share the good news, the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. As you walk through your day, look for opportunities. As you go through your neighborhoods and you pray, as you're praying for the students and the teachers, look up, wake up, look up, and be ready for the opportunities that God gives you because I believe with everything in me, and I hope you can hear my heart, the fields are ripe for harvest. Who knows who's gone before you? Who knows who's planted the seed? But we know that the fields are ripe for harvest. Let God use you to care for, to love someone. Take time out of your day. Sit with somebody, ask them how they're doing. It could be people with differing opinions than you, different political views than you. Show care, show love, show respect as Jesus did. And let's watch and see how God's love works in us and flows through us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the truth from your word this morning. And I ask God that you would guide us and lead us in this. We know it's by the power of your Holy Spirit that we are led and guided each day into each interaction that we have. So I pray God that you would guide us and lead us, empower us. We trust your word, God. We trust that the fields are ripe for harvest. And so we ask that your love flow through us to the next person we meet. Our neighbors, our friends, our family, our coworkers.
God, work in us. Help us to be a people who show respect and dignity and care and love for those who you've placed in our lives. And God, for what you do, for what you're going to do, for those that are going to come to know you, those that are going to be drawn to you, we give you praise. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Each week, and we do this in person. If you meet with us in person, I want to do it online as well. It's so important. You may be watching. Maybe somebody referred you to, to, to watch this, and I don't know if you have a walk with Christ. We want to give you an opportunity to start that journey today. Maybe that's you. Maybe today you, you want to start that journey. Or maybe today you want to renew your walk with Christ. If you find yourself in either one of those places, I want to encourage you to pray a prayer with me. Let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I, I need you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying to pay the price for my sins. By faith, I choose to follow you. I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And thank you for making me alive in you. I ask God that you would transform me into the person you created me to be. Help me to stand firm. Help me to encourage others in their faith. God, I pray that your love would work in me and would flow through me to the next person I meet. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again so much for meeting with us today. As you know, and I've explained this before, if you're struggling, if you're hurting, if you want to grow in your walk with God and you're not sure how, please reach out to us. We feel called to come alongside you in any way that we can. I hope you have an incredible week. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Thank you.